Peroxisomes are very sturdy. They have to be. All day long, they have to burn up fats and detoxify poisons. But they have a specific weakness, an Achilles heel, if you will, and that is phthalates. Phthalates are the chemicals that are added to plastics to make them more flexible. Phthalates give us products like styrofoam cups, Ziploc bags, Tupperware containers, plastic wrapped foods, plastic lined milk and juice cartons, and of course, plastic water bottles. Plastic water bottles can be the worst offenders because the more pure the water, the more phthalates will leach into it from the plastic bottle. It's a cruel irony that health conscious people who drink bottled water are actually taking in more toxins from their plastic water bottles than they would get from drinking unfiltered city tap water. Even little babies get soft plastic teething toys, plastic pacifiers, and plastic formula bottles containing phthalates. Phthalates are also found in clothing, toys, cosmetics, perfumes, nail polishes, hairsprays, skin creams, mosquito repellents, toothbrushes, car interiors, hoses, paints, vinyl, sealants, adhesives, and the list goes on. Look around you. Phthalates are everywhere. Now, if these phthalates were to stay in their host products, life would be fine, but they don't. You see, phthalates aren't chemically bound to the materials they are added to. They leak into our water, into juice, into milk, and into the foods they are supposedly protecting. They leak out of the clothes we wear and pass into our bodies through our skin. They off-gas from our floors, walls, cars, and furniture, and migrate into our lungs. Once in our bodies, phthalates wreak havoc with our endocrine system, cause birth defects and cancer, damage our mitochondria and liposomes, and most relevant to this presentation, phthalates poison our peroxisomes. The first signs of phthalate toxicity showed up in the Korean and Vietnam Wars, where injured soldiers would occasionally go into shock and die within minutes of being given blood from plastic IV bottles. Before that time, blood was stored in glass bottles, but in 1948, with the invention of plastic blood storage bags, the military abandoned the storage of blood in glass bottles since they were too easily broken in a wartime environment. Unfortunately, the phthalates leaked from the plastic bags into the stored blood and then were poured directly into those poor soldiers' bodies. Many good men died not from their wounds but from phthalate toxicity. Medical researchers who noticed that a greater number of men died of shock in these modern wars attributed that fact to the hotter climates, but phthalates were the more likely culprit. Now. Peroxisomes can take a lot of damage. In fact, they are specifically built to be able to break down toxic chemicals, but they can't handle phthalates. And these are the very toxins to which we are most frequently exposed. In fact, phthalates are the number one toxin in the body. An amazing three milligrams of them may be absorbed in a single day. Put another way, you will eat drink or inhale over 18 teaspoons of phthalates in your lifetime. Many health conscious people now eat organic foods to minimize their pesticide exposure, which of course is an excellent idea. But what they are unaware of is that phthalates are even more toxic than many pesticides and that in an average day we absorb many more phthalates than we do pesticides. So to keep the peroxisomes healthy, the first thing you have to do is to get the plastic out. You can do this by minimizing your exposure to plastics. Unfortunately, avoiding all plastics is virtually impossible in the modern world, which brings us to the second thing we need to do. We need to actively remove the phthalates from our bodies. This can be accomplished in two ways. The first method is to take regular saunas. A certain amount of phthalates can be removed with a good old-fashioned sweat, and this is something each of us should be sure to do at least once a month. Unfortunately, this can only get rid of the phthalates that are in the skin and fat. 
To get the phthalates out of the deeper internal organs, we need to employ another technique. To get the deep-seated phthalates out of the body, we need to use our innate glutathione detoxification system. Glutathione is the body's main detoxifier, and, fortunately, it can remove phthalates. Outside of detoxifying poisons, the main function of the peroxisomes is to burn fat. So, when our cells sense that fat and oil consumption has increased, they produce more peroxisomes to help metabolize them. Likewise, if they sense that less fats and oils are being consumed, they decrease in number. One of the main ways that our cells determine how much fat and oil we are consuming is to monitor the level of cetosterols in our body. Since cetosterols are always found in fats and oils, this gives the cells a way to determine the amount being consumed and then to increase or decrease peroxisome production accordingly. This peroxisome regulation system worked flawlessly right up until the time fats and oils began being mass-produced in the last century. You see, fat and oil production companies don't like cetosterols. Cetosterols gum up their multi-million dollar processing equipment. They make their products cloudy and give them a taste and odor some people find objectionable. They also cause their products to have a shorter shelf life. So what did these companies do? <laughs> you guessed it. They filtered out all the cetosterols from their products. So what happens when you eat these unnatural cetosterol-free foods? The cells are misled into thinking that the fat and oil consumption is much lower than it actually is. Over time, this causes a decrease in the number of peroxisomes. Since peroxisomes burn fat in the cells, less peroxisomes mean less fat burning capability. This can cause fat to be put in storage around the body and not just in the thighs and around the waist. In fact, fat can accumulate virtually anywhere in the body. When fat accumulates in the arteries, it is called atherosclerosis. Fat accumulation under the skin is called cellulite. Fat can and does accumulate in every organ, including the heart, brain, lungs, nerves, liver, bone marrow, and the spleen, to name but a few. So, what can we do? First, stop eating refined fats and oils. In this manner, your cells won't be blindsided by fats and oils they can't sense. Second, consider increasing your intake of cetosterols. This way, you can stimulate the production of more peroxisomes and start the process of burning all that accumulated fat out of your body. According to the Centers for Disease Control, 57% of Americans are overweight and nearly one quarter of our population is clinically obese. Detoxification, diet, exercise, and peroxisomes. A complete weight loss program must take all four of these subjects into consideration. So, let's recap. Every cell has peroxisomes in them, whose job it is to burn fat and detoxify poisons. Peroxisomes are under continual attack by the most common of all poisons in the human environment, phthalates. Peroxisomes are also artificially decreased in number due to cetosterols being processed out of our foods. The decreased number of peroxisomes in our cells can lead to fat deposition in all the organs of our bodies, as well as an accumulation of many chemical toxins that the peroxisomes would otherwise neutralize. The solution is fourfold. One, to avoid phthalates whenever possible. Two, to break into a good sweat at least once a month to sweat out some of the phthalates. Three, to support our glutathione detoxification systems so we can detoxify those phthalates we can't sweat out. And four, to increase our cetosterol intake so as to stimulate the production of more peroxisome.